this is your setup. You are going to measure, you are going to provide the solution R. That solution contains two alkalis. We are going to do a double titration in which we are going to use the same written vessel to carry out two different titrations. That means we are going to get two different endpoints. Our first endpoint is going to be a color change from the pink color of phenolphthalein indicator to colorless. Then the other end, the other color point is going, the other end point is going to be observed by a change from your orange to around pink. So you, this is your setup. You are going to measure the solution at about 25 cubic centimeters using the provided measuring cylinder. Then you measure it into a conical flask, add a few drops of your phenolphthalein for the first part, then titrate that using HCl. That means you are going to add HCl into the burette you are provided with. Then, as soon as your color turns to colorless, you stop. Then you add a few drops of your methyl indicator, so methyl orange. From that, you continue the titration. That means your first volume is going to be noted as your initial burette reading to the final, <coughs> where you obtain a colorless solution. After that, you continue. You don't add more acid to your burette. Continue from this, that same mark. That means your initial burette reading will be the, la, the value of the last end point. Then continue the titration until you get in a pink color again as your end point. We are clear? Yes. Okay, let's do it. <coughs> Make sure that when you pour your solution into your burette, Allow some to run out first before you begin the actual titration. Ensure that your burette is initially closed because they've been used. Ensure that it's initially closed. before you begin the actual titration. Mm -hmm. titration, make sure you allow some of your HCO to run out of the, of the direct. Yeah. 
the ones that they're supposed to use. That makes way just the initial Get a beat of your waist, then allow some of your each cell to run off of this. You don't Rinse this, make sure it's not easy. It's at zero. Mark. Exceed the zero mark, then allow some to run out to fill this part. And this one is leaking, definitely you will get the wrong value. You have already got it. But this one is too open, then that means your next entry will be false. This one is not checked because that is where it's leaking. Yes. Use your strong hand to check. Your strong hand, your right hand. Your right hand to check. This one to control opening of that. And then this one to check. Careful. Careful. Close. Do it for twice. Thank you. 
Your second end point is the appearance of a pink or orange color. Pink or orange color. That's your second end point after it meets an orange.
Second part. Yeah. Okay, allow this to run out first. Close. Pull that away. Then measure 25. Oh, it's no longer. Okay, can I have R? Solution R. There's no solution R. Solution R. Any group with solution R. So it's finished. Oh, can I have that one? Avoid the parallax error. So make sure you read the level of your eyes. It's 9.8. 9.8. Yes, that's the initial. And then titrate, add titrate, perform the titration. Let's touch titrating. This is this one. Slowly. Close. And then it's not your final rating. Not your final rating, and then it's your meter or Yes. Okay, those who are done, let's discuss the questions. Those who are done, let's discuss the questions. Attention. <laughs> Experiment 3, 4, 5, 5, 7 meters of solution, R is 6, 8. Yes, leave out experiment 3. Leave out experiment 3. Then, question D, item 1. When the phenolphthalein indicator was used in experiment 1, the color changed from what to what complete? You noted the changes, right? The changes that you observed when you added phenolphthalein. Right? The color changes. Right? The color changes. Thank you. 
color changes. <coughs> from colors to purple. Then what is the color of the indicator at the end of the experiment? What was the color of the indicator the explain at the end of the experiment two? What was the color of the indicator at the end of experiment two? Write that down again. Sir, attention. Write down the color at the end of experiment two. Okay, what type of substances are S and T? They have reacted with an acid and they are soluble. What type of substances are they? Yes. Yes, basis is not the correct answer, but it's sort of correct, but not the acceptable answer. A soluble base is called what? An alkali. So the alkali is the correct answer, not this. What conclusion can you draw from experiment three? Don't ignore that one since you did not do experiment three. Then F. Listen, the volume of hydrochloric acid added in experiment one reacted with all of substance S and half of substance T. For experiment one, the volume of acid that you added reacted with all of your S and only half of T. We are told that our other contains two substances, which is S and T. We are told that R contains two substances, S and T. Then in your experiment one, in your experiment one, the volume of your HCl reacted with O of S plus half of T. And then, the volume that you added in experiment two reacted with half of T. In your experiment two, your HCl reacted with half of T. And then questions. Work out the volume of hydrochloric acid which reacted with substance S. Let's think about that. Volume of hydrochloric acid which reacted with substance S. We are told that the first volume for the first end point using phenolphthalein, that end point indicated that O of S had reacted, but also half of T. Then for the second part using methyl orange, only half of T had reacted. That means half of T plus half of T. So T was exhausted in the second reaction, in the second end point. Now let's try to work out how much or what volume reacted with S. Who wants to try? Let's suppose, what did you get for a percent point volume? 11. Let's suppose here for the first part I had 11 and for the second part, experiment two. Eight. You had eight. Here you had 11 and here you had eight. We are clear. Now, of these 11, maybe eight reacted with S, that means three reacted with T. And then the rest of T needed eight. Now, how do we get the volume that is required for S? How do we get the volume that is required for S? Okay, maybe take it this way. Take it this way. <coughs> if half of T for the second part required eight, how much is required by half of T for the first part? It's still eight. Now, how much if the first part requires eight for T, and for the total of T and S required 11, how much is required for S? Yes. Three. It's three. 
And how do you get that? 11 minus 8. So it's the value of your first title minus the value of the second end point. You get it? Okay, let's proceed. I write that down and proceed. Compare the volumes of hydrochloric acid which reacted with substance S and T. Compare the volumes. Let's compare the volumes which reacted with S and T. Yes, Anisha. Compare the volumes of substance which reacted with S and T. You have the volumes. All right, how much, how much of your HCl reacted with S? Anisha, how much of your HCl reacted with S? Sarah, how much of your HCl reacted with S? You are still working it out. All right, we have finished. Not much on anyone else who has finished. Which one? How much of HCl reacted with T? Um. No, 11 minus 8. So it's 3. And then how much of HCl reacted with S is the difference. So for S, we agreed that using your answer, S is 3. And T is 8. Our T is 16. Yes, 16, you are correct. Half year, another 8 then. So T is 16. And then compare 16 and 3. That's the question. Compare the volume that reacted with S and the volume that reacted with T. Compare more or less greater. Yes. The volume required for T is greater than the volume required for S. That's the answer for that question. Then, G item one. Predict the volume of hydrochloric acid which would be added in experiment one and two if the experiments were repeated using 100 cubic centimeters of R. Explain your answer. Now, for experiment one, we used 25 cubic centimeters of R. Yes. Now, we are going to use 100. Let's predict the volumes of S. Let's predict the volumes of HCl that would be required to reach the end point. If we are using 100, yes. 44. For experiment, one would require 44. Are we clear? It's 44 because. Okay, let me. Yes, it's four times. For 25, we required 11. For 100, we require four times. That means for experiment one, we would require 44. And for experiment two, for experiment two, if we use the eight. Yes. Different hands. At the back. For it, yes, 32, 8 by 4. Okay, so that's clear. Then the explanation, why is it that way? Why is it that we require 44 and 32? Explain that. The volume has been multiplied by 4. Okay. Suggest a practical problem that could, suggest a practical problem that would occur when carrying out these experiments and how you could solve this problem. Suggest a problem. Let's think, yes. Contamination of your reagents. Contamination of your reagents is correct. Where else? Which other problem can you think of? Yes. Uh, not accurate fittings. Inaccurate rate fittings. For example, you can have a parallax error if you don't reach the level of your eyes. What else can be a problem? 
the one which was common for the bulk of you. The one which was common. The use of indicators. Which problem did you encounter in the use of indicators? In noting endpoints. Most of you overshot the endpoint. So it's another problem that can be encountered. Okay, do you have questions about this particular experiment? Do you have questions? Sarah, do you have questions about this particular experiment? Do you have questions? There are no questions. You understood? Yes. And if given the same experiment, you can do it without me here. Yes. And produce accurate results. Yes. Okay, that's very good. Thank you all for coming. Make sure you clear up everything and you have a good day. Thank you.